everybody. Today, I will tell you about one of the most important and yet very much underrated system in our body called as the immune system or in very simple terms referred to as the body's defense mechanism. The understanding of the body's defense mechanism is especially important in the present times as we are faced by the COVID pandemic with no necessary cure for the disease. All we hear from our doctors, medical experts and the scientific community is to be healthy by strengthening our immunity. What exactly do they mean by building or strengthening our immunity? They are actually telling us to be prepared for a war, to keep our army or the defense system in the body active so as to be able to tackle our enemies. They are also telling us that we are at the mercy of our defense system. So today, I will discuss with you the basic defense mechanisms in our body. Before we actually get there, let me build some curiosity in you. We know that we are all surrounded by harmful agents such as pathogens and microbes, which include bacteria and viruses, also toxic substances and dust in the environment that we live in. But in spite of all this, we are not affected by them every day. We do not fall sick every day and we are not down with an infection or a disease on a daily basis. How do you think this is possible? Well, this is possible because of our so-called silent hero, the defense mechanism in our body. This fascinating system in our body protects us from the constant attack of foreign particles such as bacteria and viruses. The body has developed three lines of defense which takes help from the physical barriers, chemical barriers, defensive cells and proteins and the body's immune cells. Let's now look at the first line of defense. What is the first line of defense? The first line of defense is to prevent the entry of foreign substances into our body with a so-called fence created by a combination of physical and chemical barriers. So what are these physical and chemical barriers? Let's first begin with the physical barriers. The physical barriers that I'm talking about is nothing but our skin, the mucus lining in our body, and also the hair in our nose acts as coarse, coarse filters. Now coming to our skin. Skin is protecting the outer surface of the body. They have cells that are filled with something called as the keratin. And this keratin makes the skin impenetrable. It makes it waterproof and also helps it to resist entry of toxins and most of the invaders. It is also very important to remember that the skin cells are replaced once every three to four weeks and the dead cells are shed away. Taking away microbes such as bacteria and viruses and trapped with, within them. The next one is the mucus lining. It is a layer that covers the inner surface of our nasal cavity, our foot pipe and stomach among other. However, the mucus lining is not as strong as our skin. We are more vulnerable to the foreign substance. So this is about the physical barriers. The next is the chemical barriers. The chemical barriers that we see around in our body, firstly, is the sweat. The sweat produced by our skin washes away microbes and the acidity of the sweat slows down the growth of microorganisms present on the surface of the skin. The next chemical barrier that I can think of is mucus. This alone sticky substances helps to trap the microbes within it. And the other chemical barriers include saliva and tears. They, these saliva and tears have something called as the enzyme, which are substances that can kill the microorganisms. The ear wax present in our ears can also help to trap dust and dirt particles. So these are the chemical barriers in our body. 
Now that we have an understanding of the physical and chemical barrier which form our first line of defense, let's move on to the second line of defense. The second line of defense comes into play when the pathogens have escaped the first line of defense. There are many players and processes involved in the second line of defense. Firstly, the defense cells. The defense cells are certain type of white blood cells circulating throughout our body and are constantly scanning or looking for anything foreign. Once they encounter them, they destroy them before it can cause any harm to the body. Let me now show you a few examples. The first example of defensive cell is a phagocyte. As you can see, they engulf the pathogen and trap them and eventually kill them. Similarly, there is another type of cell called as the macrophages. They attract the pathogens, both small and large pathogens towards them, entrap them and finally kill them. Now, talking about another specific type of white blood cells known as natural killer cells. These natural killer cells are always on the lookout for abnormal cells within our own body. These abnormal cells could be cancerous cells. Once they identify these cells, they wait no longer and try to destroy them. The next player in the second line of defense is substances that are produced and released from the defensive cells called as secretory proteins. These released proteins then help in identifying and killing the pathogens or even the infected cells. One such cell is the mast cell which releases proteins called as histamines and activate the defense system or they can also even send signals for help. Apart from these defensive cells involved in the second line of defense, let us also look at processes of the body that help in defense. One such interesting process is called as inflammation. I will try to explain this with an example. When a honeybee stings you, what happens in a matter of few minutes? You can see that in the place where the bee stung you, there will be redness, swelling, elevated temperature, you will feel warm there and also pain. All these processes takes place as our body's response to the injury or the damage in the tissue which will eventually help in the healing of the injury. Now, another effective way designed by our body to fight pathogen is to develop mild to moderate fever. At this relatively high temperature, the growth of pathogens or microbes such as bacteria or viruses is affected or rather slowed down. At these elevated temperatures also alerts the immune system of a possible infection. So in totality, inflammation and mild to moderate fever are not really bad for us, but they are ways in which our body is fighting against enemies, mainly pathogens. All these different white blood cells, including the proteins released by them that we discussed, are not very specific and react to any pathogen or foreign substances. This is the same as the first line of defense. Both the first and the second line of defense are non-specific. But they are still very effective in protecting against the majority of pathogens that attack us. Let's now move on to the third line of defense. The third line of defense is a more specific response to the attacking pathogens. The immune cells in our body recognizes the pathogen, produces specific response and then kills the infected cells. There are two main type of cells involved in the third line of defense. They are called as T cells and T cells. First, let us talk about T cells. 
different types of T cells are involved in producing a response. A type of T cells called as the helper T cells identifies the cells with the pathogens. They then activate another type of T cells called as a killer T cells which directly kill the infected cells. The second responsive cell is the B cells. Let us see how this functions. The T helper cells that we talked about previously can also activate B cells which then produces antibody specific to those pathogens. The antibodies then bind to the pathogens and eventually kill it. These two processes are highly regulated and extremely reliable. There is one very interesting thing that happens during the process called as immunological memory. Let me explain this with an example. All of us know that once you get chickenpox, you are highly unlikely to get it again. Another example is, once we get vaccination for a certain disease, we are almost sure that we will not get the severe form of the disease we are vaccinated against. Have you ever thought why this happens? This happens because our memory T cells and memory B cells stores the information of all the infection that it has fought and keeps the information ready for any future attack. Thus, when we are attacked by the same pathogen again, the defense system responds immediately and prevents the pathogen from causing any harm. So, I would like to conclude by saying that we have a very strong line of defense mechanism within us that fights the battle against all pathogens we expose them to to keep us safe and healthy. Boost your immune system. Thank you for listening to this video.